Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new to, new to my channel, my name is Connie. I make fashion, beauty, lifestyle, workout, vlog, recipe, whatever you ask. I have everything on my channel. So make sure to subscribe because I'm gonna, I have so many good content for you. But if you're coming back, my old subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and welcome back. Today's video, I wanna share with you guys my five tip for how you can have a productive day. It's more like uh, for those who are stay-at-home moms, but honestly, the tips are you can use it if you're a student, if you go to work, or if you're just a single person who work from home, doesn't matter. So all the tips are very useful and a lot of people think stay-at-home moms doesn't have anything to do or it's not really a rush or something but honestly we have so many things to do so many things needs to be done and a lot of the times our day never goes as we planned because of the kids because of sudden schedule all that kind of stuff for me i used to work a nine to five job and then i feel like i used to finish everything before um, I used to stay on top of my list. I did everything that is supposed to be done. I did my errands, my daily tasks, everything was really organized. After becoming a stay-at-home mom, I feel like I can't do anything, I can't finish anything. All day just like time flies, day flies when you're a stay-at-home mom and at the end of the day I feel like what have I done, why the day passed so quick, why I didn't finish this and that. So so many times I have days like that and it actually leads you to losing motivation for the next day, like not doing anything for the next day, maybe week, month or so. I've had those. So I wanted to share with you guys my five tip I have been using lately and I'm really happy with my day and it's everything is getting better. If this video help you anyway, that's all matter. So please give thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. So tip number one is waking up early. Now, I know it might sound too obvious for those who work, for those who have kids, you have to take them to school. Like, I, I know it sounds really obvious, but what I mean by waking up early is at least wake up hour before your kids or everybody wakes up so that you can get ready, you can prepare the breakfast, you can like make sure everything's ready to get out the door on time or you can have your own little time i never had a time journal or read a book or spend time to things that i love to do like for example if getting ready putting makeup on makes you feel better then get up early and do it for yourself my kids usually wake up at 7 6 30 7 and i wake up at 5 30 or 6 o'clock usually 6 o'clock because you know who doesn't like sleeping but i wake up at 6 o'clock i prepare their breakfast i have my coffee i write down i read a little bit of book or i journal or you know i put some makeup on do my hair whatever makes me happy and then that day usually goes really well because I start my day with really positive, happy beginning. I've been doing um, journaling in the morning, the first thing I wake up in the morning, which is uh, tip number two, you should do journaling. Well, why I think it's really important is that I feel like when you're a stay-at-home mom, you don't have a lot of time to talk to someone. You probably have friends, but it's not like you can say everything in your mind. You can be stressed because, you know, you have kids, you have, you're a staying home mom, you're not meeting a lot of people, and you probably feel sometimes depressed or sad or don't even understand what's going on with you. But when I start journaling, it actually helps me to release what, what I'm thinking in my mind 
what I'm worrying about, what I should do, what I should not do, like kind of opening up myself instead of locking it in. So number two, tip number two, I've been started journaling. And then at the end of the journal, I like to write down how I want to feel that day. Like, um, it doesn't matter how the day is gonna go, but when I start my day with, okay, I'm gonna feel better today, then the day will be better. So try journaling if you've never done. <laughs> Tip number three, to-do list. Maybe it sounds like a broken record, but to-do list is very, very important. Like it doesn't matter you work in a corporate job or it doesn't matter you go to school. To-do list is something um, very important if you wanna have productive day, of course. So uh, for example, after I journal, I like to do my to-do to list for the day. What should I be doing today? What needs to be done as, as soon as possible? Things like that. So it will keep me on track because a lot of times I think like, okay, I have to call a doctor. Then if I don't write it down, I usually forget it. So make sure make a to-do list, but don't stress yourself with long lists which I, I was doing for longest time, I write down 10 things or 20 things that I need to be done today. And at the end of the day, you're not gonna finish at all. Like maximum you should have is like three or four most important things to do. And then at the end of the day, if you do more than that, you will feel productive for sure. But if you put like 10 things and you can't finish five of them, you're gonna feel like you didn't have a good day. So my um, tip number three, make sure have a to-do list, but make it short, make it um, doable. Tip number four is um, planning your dinner lunch ahead of a time. Like I like to plan my lunch dinner for whole week on Sunday like a week before Sunday so I would write down all the menus I want to do Monday like I want to do this I want to do that so every week most likely dinner because lunchtime my daughter eats very little and I eat something else something easier so I barely I don't want to cook like a huge meal for lunchtime so I'm like flexible on the lunch time, but I still kind of have idea what I'm gonna eat that that week. And for dinner time, Sophie, kids come home, husband comes home, so we have a family dinner, so I have to have a nice meal prep. So what I do is on Sunday night, I write down Monday through Sunday, every, every actually Monday through Friday, what I should cook for dinner time. Because a lot of times when it becomes a dinner time, you feel like, okay, what am I gonna cook? And it's gonna take like certain times to find the menu and then you figure out that you don't have the ingredients, then you have to run to the store. And it's just, it saves a lot of time when you have already planned recipe. All you have to do is put everything out and then cook, that's it. And you will have all the ingredients on Sunday, like you have to go to grocery shop and buy everything for all five recipes and you have everything ready in your refrigerator. So that have helped me so much, saved me so much time. I've been using slow cooker a lot, which is, it's a warm meal, it's easy, it's so comfortable, cozy. Like I love slow cookers. So if you have never tried them, I like totally recommend you to use slow cooker a lot too number five is actually a tip from a mom she gave it to me she told me to do it and it's been helping so much which is not saying things later or putting back things where it was what what I mean by that is for example if you have um, if, when you do dishes 
I was that type of person who collect everything and then do it at the end of the day or when I prepare dinner I like destroy the kitchen or like just collect everything in the sink eat the dinner and then after clean everything so I was that kind of person but what I understood was when you collect more dishes it's gonna take more time which is gonna be one of more, one of your to-do lists one of things that you have to live because it's gonna take long time and if you have like a fuzzy baby crying maybe if you didn't have help then the dish is gonna end up not be cleaned so my mom told me that if you see like a one or two cups in the sink just wash it right away so after having breakfast just wash it right away or while when you're cooking like when you use something wash it and put it back so um, while, when I'm cooking I use cutting board with a knife when I finish with it wash it right away and put it away and at the end of the cooking I have nothing to wash which was um, until I compliment this I didn't understand it and it is it makes so much different it does make so much different and please comment down below what do you think are you the person who collects it or are you a person who washes it right away I, I don't know I was I was the one who collects before now I'm the one who is washing it right away which is like making everything so better the other thing she told me was putting things back where it was which is I'm very bad at it I'm still working on it but for example if you use a brush from the wherever from kids bathroom and then you do their hair in their room just put it back don't just leave it there because it's gonna be something you have to clean up later so it'll help you to keep the house picked up but I hope you guys enjoyed this little video and Hopefully it'll help you help any of you in any way and please give thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel I will see you next time. Bye